There's been some talk lately about the LGA 1700 CPUs having bad thermal performance because of bending. So I thought I would speculate a little bit more about why that is happening. Uh, after looking at it some more, uh, I think there are two contributing factors to why the CPU is bending. So the first up is mostly to do with the dimensions and the pins. So if I compare the LJ1700 to the LJ1200 and the LJ2066, which are also both from Intel, then what I can see is that the LJ1200 is uh, perfectly square. Uh, the LGA 2066 is somewhat rectangular, but the LGA 1700 is more rectangular than both of them. So the ratio between the long side and the short side is 1.2 times, uh, where the LGA 2066 is slightly less than that. If I look at the pins then from a picture, I've counted them all up here. What I can see is that most of the pins are actually on the outside of the CPU. So they are the furthest away from the clamping point, which is in the middle. And also that the CPU is not completely symmetrical. So you have 88 pins more here than you have here. I don't know why. If you look at the pins, then they are actually very small springs. So they don't really need a lot of force to be pushed in. But because there are a lot of pins together, they do need some force to be pushed in. I think it's about... If I'm look, uh, looking at the specs from Intel, it's maybe 40 kilograms for the 1200 and up to 80 kilograms, I think, for the larger CPUs. So that's quite a lot of force that is bearing on a very small CPU. If I look at the distribution of the pins in this one dimension, so you have the clamping point in the middle, and what you can see is that because there are more pins on the outside, it also means that you have kind of a bit like a, st a stronger spring on the outside than on the middle. What that means is that if you look at the CPU and if you look at the forces acting on it, then you have to clamp on the middle and then on the other side you have a spring that is larger on the outside and smaller on the inside that is acting upon it. Having a larger spring on the outside essentially always means that you have a little bit of deformation uh, to be slightly concave. And this is, I think, the contributing factor, together with the next point I'm going to have a look at. Uh, looking at the CPU, actually every CPU that has a clamping point in the middle is going to have a very small amount of deformation. And this deformation is caused by the fact that you have the clamping point in the middle and you have the forces that have to be spread out over the whole CPU and it's going to bend it a little bit. And the bending is not really a force that is going to uh, react something else, but it is something that is going to cause deformation. It's going to cause stress on the inside of the IHS. And the IHS is, is going to be a very large part of the stiffness of the whole CPU because it has slightly, slightly more height than the PCB itself. And the strength of this part is actually going to have a very large factor in the strength, uh, in the deformation of the CPU. And for a lot of CPUs, it will be a very small amount of uh, deformation. But this is, this is kind of like the law of, uh, it's, it's going to be very small, but at some point it's, uh, it's large enough to have an effect on, for example, thermal performance. Having the CPU be rectangular, and which means that the, the distance here is longer, also means that you have, can have more bending. Even if the force is the same, because it's further away from the clamping point, it's going to have more bending and it's going to have more deformation. One thing I like to look at with a design like this, or with design, uh, with maybe what could be a problem or maybe what could not be a problem is to look at what other in what other designs have has been done or or if the design is exactly the same so if you if you're looking at a design and a different design has a clear different philosophy then it, you can look at that and maybe say all right maybe we should do something different and if the design is mostly the same somewhere else then this could point to a different issue <laughs> 
So looking at probably a bit of speculation on the AM4, the uh, AM5 in the CPU, I can already see two clear differences between uh, that and the LG 1700. Uh, of course, this is also the first uh, land grid, uh, well, not the first, I think. It's the first consumer land grid LA CPU from AMD, probably because it has a lot more pins than in the other designs. Uh, what I can see is that, first off, it has a square design, which means you have a, a bit more even. You're going to have a bit less deformation because the distance between the center and the, the outside pins is smaller. And the second thing I can see here is that they've moved the SD components to the top of the PCB instead of on the other side, which means that you can place more pins here. This also means that you're going to have an even distribution in, uh, I can say, spring across the whole length. So you won't have, uh, you're going to have the same spring here, which means that the force acting on the CPU is going to be even through this whole length. So that would give it less deformation. But this is probably more speculation, but if I look at the socket, it also, or look at the CPU, it also looks like the IHS is uh, thicker. A thicker IHS would mean you have more stiffness in that direction. And that would also give it less deformation when it's clamped up. Uh, there's not really any numbers or actual CPUs that I can have a look at, so it's probably speculation. If I look at the in the other Intel socket, the larger LGA 2066, then what I can already directly see is that the instead of having a clamp in the middle here, uh, there is two clamps on the outside where also most of the pins are. So this is a different design and it's also something that will have less effect on the CPU because it will first it supports the CP, uh, it clamps the CPU where most of the pins are because in the center here you have the SMD components and the second thing is then that you're not going to have as much moment because you're supporting it at two positions instead of having it at one position. So it's a substantial difference between that and the LGA 1700. The other advantage that you have here is that if the, the deformation that you, you're going to have here is going to be convex instead of concave. If you look here at the example at what is, I think, happening with the LGA 1700, you can see that it's slightly concave, which means that you have a bit more thermal phase exactly at the chip, which is also the most critical part of cooling the chip down because it's going to have the shortest path. It, so that means that you, know, you have more thermal resistance exactly at the point that you actually want to have the least amount of thermal resistance. If you compare that to a convex shape where you have slightly more paste on the outside, it means that you still have very good contact between the chip and the IHS to the cooler. So you're, you're still going to lose a little bit of performance, but if you look at the path that the heat has to go, then it's going from the chip into the IHS, so it's going to go up and then to the right and to the left. And the path that you have here is much better because the, the path of least resistance is already straight to the cooler, and then this is a it's an added effect, uh, but it's a lot better than having a lot of cooling paste exactly at this position. So that is how far I can get with the speculation on what's happening with the LJ1700 and what could be causing thermal performance or the slightly concave deformation on the CPU. I would love to run maybe calculations on how uh, on how strong the IHS together with the CPU is, maybe find an element, but I don't really have any good dimensions of that, especially uh, the dimension of this to actually look at it. I know it's it's a, a copper with a bit of tin around it, so I, I know copper is a bit more ductile, a bit less stiff than, for example, stainless steel would be with a lot better thermal conductivity. So I could 
do a preliminary calculation, maybe compare it to the 1200, but I don't really have good data on this. Uh, I might be able to find out like the outside dimensions, but the inside has to come from a deleted CPU. So I'd love to try that. Uh, if there's any other points that you want to have, then I'd love to see it maybe in the comments. Uh, I'll have a look at that.